Welcome back to History in a Hurry. Today we're going to talk about Stephen Mather. And he's generally regarded as the father of the National Park Service. Uh, born into a fairly wealthy family in San Francisco, California on July 4th. And he becomes a part of the Pacific Coast Borax Company. Uh, borax being this uh, mineral that's used in detergents and various cleaning products. And he kind of has this genius for marketing. And so he uh, talks about it as the 20 mule team borax. Uh, and it kind of has this romantic connotation to it. Um, he even took the time to uh, pen kind of fictitious letters to prominent magazines posing as this housewife, talking about how much it had revolutionized her cleaning and her laundry, and et cetera. And after kind of leaving the Pacific Coast Borax uh, Company, he helped uh, found another one with a friend of his and eventually he became uh, a millionaire and that kind of allowed him to pursue his own uh, personal passions. One of those was uh, nature and conservation. And uh, he heads out into uh, the Sierra Nevadas. Uh, he becomes a close personal friend of John Muir, uh, joins the Sierra Club, uh, joins the Boone and Crockett Club, and really starts to develop a love for the national parks. And he starts to notice in 1914 just how much they've deteriorated. And in a letter that we now believe probably didn't happen, um, he writes a letter to Secretary of the Interior Franklin K. Lane uh, talking about how terrible they are. And Franklin K. Lane's apparent response was that if you think uh, you can run the parks better, why don't you come on down to Washington and do it yourself? And sure enough, he does show up. Uh, he becomes the first director of the National Park Service. Uh, he sets in uh, place some of the, not only rules for how it's gonna be run, but the hiring of rangers, and exactly how the parks are gonna be interpreted for the public. He encourages the railroads to advertise the parks uh, as automobiles become prominent uh, in the early part of the 20th century. He encourages the bringing in of automobiles into the uh, national parks to really get people to love them and work to preserve them. Uh, he brings in concessions to the national parks for the first time. All of these are elements that revolutionize what the parks would become. Uh, it certainly runs afoul of some of the conservationists and the purists uh, on that issue, but it definitely sets in motion what we can see as the parks uh, today. Uh, he did suffer from what we would consider bipolar disorder, having these uh, manic uh, and depressive episodes that oftentimes land him in hospitals and kind of uh, bedridden for quite some time. Uh, and kind of the only thing that would bring him out of it was this ability to get out and connect uh, with the parks. Uh, he was helped out hugely by Horace Albright, uh, who became the second director of the National Park Service. But um, in 1929, he does suffer a stroke and would end up dying uh, a year later. But his efforts really lay the foundation for the National Park Service. And so in all of the parks that were in existence when he died, as well as later parks have uh, developed, have added them, um, there are these plaques. And the line at the end of them is that there will never come an end to the good that he has done. And he's really one of these people that changes the way we view uh, our relationship with the land and with our country. He also happens to be the most prized badge that you can earn uh, in my uh, gamified class, and that's to be honored with the Stephen Mather badge. Uh, which requires you to earn four badges of one type and one of each of the other three. So you've really got to be pretty exceptional and epic and legendary in your work. Spin history in a hurry.